All right, I I had to restart um, real quick, so um, I think we are back, and I I think everybody should be able to uh, see my screen and uh, hear my voice. So real quick, guys, just uh, let me know if you can see my screen and hear my voice, and uh, we'll get moving. All right, good to go. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to um, <clears throat> take just about um, you know maybe 15, 20 minutes, hopefully not longer. Um, just to walk through uh, some of the open positions, and I'm probably going to cover all of them. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, maybe, yeah, all of them except for um, just the, the two that we opened today. There's no reason to uh, look at them, but we'll look at them anyways. Um, so one of the first things I wanted to point out was that, um, you know, between myself uh, Anya and Frank, you know, we put out a lot of different trade ideas. And when I say trade ideas, all of our trade alerts should be treat, treated as such, right? These are just trade ideas. You should be able to take the idea and then kind of um, structure risk in a way that works for you, right? Some happen to, you know, um, have the same risk profile as uh, we do. And, you know, they take similar trades, maybe exact same trades, and that's fine. But um, between the three of us, you know, last year when we really uh, got going, I think in the first six months, we put out like a thousand ideas. And I think that myself, I was only in for about 200 of the thousand. So there's a lot of ideas out there. Is it possible to keep track of all of them? Uh, no, unless, you know, we all um, keep track of our uh, trade ideas and we put it on the spreadsheet and then, but then which, you know, who's going to keep track of a thousand different um, trades, right? So uh, when I get asked questions such as, you know, do you have a track record? You know, I'll show you a track record of 10,000 ideas. And, you know, what does that do? It does absolutely nothing. I think that um, the takeaway here is if you could come and um, join our group and if you can learn the process that we use and we all have different trading uh, styles different methods different um, methodology and so on and if you could find what works for you if you can learn from uh, one of three of us you can you know pick something from one trader pick something else from another trader and kind of mold it all together into a, a trading style that works best for you that is the best case scenario for you. Um, I'm going to go through um, trades that I have on. Um, a lot of you that uh, have been trading with me for a while, they already know that you know I don't scalp. I don't day trade. I'm not an aggressive uh, in and out uh, same day kind of a trader. I look for uh, swing trades. I look for trends. And a lot of times when we go into you know uh, sideways consolidation, no trend, I may not put on any new trades. I may just uh, adjust some of the trades that I have going on. And I don't typically uh, counter trend, meaning that I don't look for bearish setups in an overall bullish market, right? Um, I've tried that time and time again for, you know, God knows how long, and it doesn't work for me. So I've uh, given up on that. Not, not totally, but for the most part. Um, I don't want to short anything when overall market is rising, unless it's a very individual case. And, you know, there's evidence that uh, uh, that individual um, stock or company is rolling over and there's, you know, um, volume to the downside and so on and so forth. But for the most part, we've been in a rising market. Uh, we have been overbought since 2010, as I said earlier today, and it is true. Uh, we are just, um, I don't know, how far are we away from an all-time high? Like literally um, a spit away, right? So um, there is nothing bearish. Even if uh, S&P is down uh, just a couple of points today, doesn't mean, it may feel like the market is crashing, but we're not, okay? Uh, overall trend is up. Uh, we're uh, steady uh, on that trend. And, you know, so far earnings have been good. We have... Uh, um, we have um, overall upside momentum, and uh, I don't think that um, 
unless we have clear evidence that market is rolling over when we start making um, lower highs and higher lows uh, shift in momentum that's going to um, give me uh, a reason to believe that uh, it's time to go out and look for opportunities to short this market um, i will say that uh, um was it uh, last week, week before that, on the Friday where the market closed like under the 50-day moving average and things started to kind of look a little shaky and it was enough reason for me to believe that uh, things may be getting a little dicey, but it quickly went away. All of last week we were you know, up, up, up and um, this week again, uh, we're trading higher. So no reason to be concerned you just got to stay with the trend and that's what i like you know this is the kind of market that i like i like to trade uh in the direction of um the trend so a lot of positions that i'm going to share with you um uh today these uh have been on for quite some time i've been in these trades and along the way if the trade starts to work in my favor my number one goal is to find a way to reduce risk, meaning to bring some of the initial capital outlay back home, right? So that I have capital available for new trade ideas. Uh, and I want to leave some room um, for uh, further upside. Doesn't always work that way and you will see, but um, that's the idea. So one of uh, the first things that I have on my list is um this is um a trade that i took and the wix i think they uh build websites i'm not really sure about and i don't really care too much about the companies i don't trade the companies i only look at the charts and i look at the trade setups and if i like it i take it if i don't i don't care so much about um what the company does or who their ceo or you know their um, social media uh, page and whatnot so this was a um, setup. I was looking for a breakout, right? We had um, a series of uh, lower highs and you know it looked like there was support. So I was looking for a breakout higher. Didn't really happen as such, but this is what um, the trade looks like. Uh, and I've been in this trade for 57 days, right? So I, I don't know where you guys are, but to some of the newer, uh, members that are joining us 57 days is like you know three lifetimes away uh, if you're trading next week's expiration but um, this is the kind of trades that I like to take right so I took this trade um, far out in time I wanted to give myself enough time to be right um, the trade initially started off as um, just a vertical and then when the stock started to go up I was able to convert uh, the vertical spread. It was a is a um, uh, call debit spread. I had uh, converted this into a broken wing uh, call butterfly with no upside risk. And now it's just kind of hanging out inside of this profit tent. I don't really need to do anything about it. Uh, we can go back and we can look at um, where it started. Um, just just so that you get an idea of how these kind of trades work, right? So this is uh, what the trade looked like at the beginning, right? So um, the stock was at uh, 267. Um, I had initiated a uh, 260, uh, 300. So this was a 40 point wide, right? For about um, $16. So it was a $1,600 per one spread, you know, it's um, higher priced uh, vertical uh, spread. And um, this had over 120 days. So like four months out, right? And, and the reason why is because uh, I wasn't sure how fast the stock was going to move, but I was looking for higher prices, you know, three, four months out into the future. Okay, so that's where the trade started. And then we can go and look at, um, so 51 days into it. So after 50 days, right, this trade was only up about 10% on risk. It was up 10%. You know, it was up, it was down, 
kind of just trapping sideways, didn't really do a whole lot. And they came back to the level where it was, you know, it looked like it was um, breaking out again. So what I did was I said, okay, I still have about 70 days, which is totally fine. It's just a very slow mover, right? This is not your Tesla. It's not your GameStop. This one was moving. It was moving in the right direction, but it was moving very slow. So for me to unlock some of the capital, right, I had about $1,600 per one spread tied into this um, trade. So I needed to take some of that money out and I wanted to use it for something else. So what can I do? Right, so I decided to sell a um, another vertical spread. So I had a long 40 point wide vertical spread. I sold another vertical spread, which was a 300, 330. So I was long a 40 wide and I sold a 30 wide. So it was a 40 by 30 vertical, um, a combination of two vertical spreads that put this um, into a call butterfly which gave me no risk to the upside, but the premium I collected from selling the um, 300, 330 call spread, uh, premium I collected uh, went towards reducing my cost um, of um, my uh, long uh, vertical spread. So <clears throat> the cost of um, the 260, 300 went from about 1600 down to about 855. So I cut my cost in half. Right. So I reduced my cost in half. I definitely gave up a lot of potential upside, right? Over 300. So there's this is a give and take game, right? I gave up potential upside in exchange. I got a chance to reduce my cost by about 50%. 50%, 50 percent, 50%, 50. Right. So my 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 risk went from my risk went from um, 1600 down to 855. And then we continue sideways and now going back to where we are today. So we're still inside of the profit um, zone and I have 64 days to go. I don't really need to do anything right here right now. If I thought for some reason, um, stock was rolling over or there was more downside i can always roll up my um uh, lowest um strike from 260 up to 270 right so i'm selling 260 buying 270 and i could further reduce my downside again giving up more potential upside and 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 that's how i'm going to treat this trade right so i'm going to stay in it and not do anything for as long as I think that the price is neutral or slightly bullish. I don't have to worry about upside risk. But if I think that price is rolling over and I was, you know, the market's getting weak, or uh, I look at the chart and for whatever reason I think this thing is going down, I may start to roll my 260 closer to the 300, taking more risk off the table and potentially putting myself in a position where. This trade will be neutral and I don't have as much risk in this trade. So that's for the Wix. Uh, next up is um, Western Digital. And this is another trade that um, also I think, yeah, so this was uh, initiated back in December. Again, pay attention. This trade has been open for 55 days, right? I've been in the trade for 55 days. If you're coming in here looking to buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell three times a day, 55 days is like, whoa, you know, um, a lifetime away. So these are slow moving trades. There's no reason to um, hyper scalp. Um, let's take a look at, um, uh, this is where um, this trade started. All right, so the stock was coming up. We got to about 55. I thought we were going to go higher. I had initiated a trade. I bought.
Let me just go back real quick and show you what it looked like when I had bought. I bought a April 50 call with 119 days to go. Right. So this is almost four months out. I bought an in the money call. It was four months out. And then I held this call until, you know, the stock was moving higher, but I was slowly bleeding some of that premium. And it wasn't terrible. It didn't look too bad, right? It looked like it was it was kind of just chopping flag. And if you want to, you, you can call this a bull flag, but it wasn't really doing too much. So I said, well, I need to figure out a way, right? If we're going to continue, you know, chopping around, I need to figure out a way how to take some of that money that I paid for this trade back. I need to take some of that principal back. Yet I wanted to remain bullish um, on the near term. So what I end up doing, I had sold. I had sold a 55 call with 30 days to go. So you can see that before I, uh, I did that, my risk in this trade was $860 per one contract. And when I sold the 55 call with less time until expiration, my risk got cut in almost half, right? And my risk went from 860 to um, 480. And I still had positive delta, so which means that if the stock goes higher, I am still going to make a profit. If it just kind of, if it goes higher, but slow, I'm going to be in good shape too. So that was the idea. And now we are, so now I have, so the stock did go higher, right? 55 days later, we moved um, just over one standard deviation higher. Um, the 55 call that I sold is now, you know, almost 10 points in the money with 15 days to go. Um, real quick about um, risk of getting assigned. Yes, there is a risk of getting assigned on the uh, short 55s. So if you're not comfortable, consider, you know, just taking a profit here. This, this, this trade is showing about a 10% return on risk. It's not terrible. It, you know, it, it's nothing to uh, uh, do victory laps around, but um, I think that's good enough. And, you know, if you're concerned about getting assigned on it, you don't know what to do if and when you get assigned on your short 55s. Um, I think that makes sense to um, uh, take the trade off and move on. Um, but in any case, I'm going to hold it for, you know, it's it's really neutral. I'm going to hold it for as long as I can. If I get assigned, I will just uh, close out my uh, long option and it still will be a profitable trade. So I'm not so concerned. Um, could I do something else to it? Sure, I can add an add the money calendar and, you know, that will require more risk. I'm not really interested in that. I'm just going to leave it at that. So if the stock continues higher, I might just bail on it for a small profit. If it continues lower, so for example, we can look at this trade um, like seven days into the future. If we get just a slow move lower down to about 58, you know, this trade is going to show about a, you know, um, 12 or 13 percent return on risk. It's still going to be in the same range. So if you don't think this is a significant change, then it probably just makes sense to um, close out here and move on. But overall, it's a decent trade. No risk to the upside. All of the risk to the downside. If the stock starts to roll over, get out. If the stock starts to slide lower, get out. Anyways, it's very hard to lose in a trade like this. Next up, I have a, a leftover uh, piece in um, Amazon. This one is not moving where it needs to go, but I have reduced risk in this trade quite a bit, right? So I have like eight days left. I'm treating this as kind of a you know lotto at this point. I have removed all of the risk, not all, but most of the risk, right? So I have like uh, $275 per one lot of risk in this trade. 
And um, I think that um, if Amazon gets its act together and it trades higher next week, this is going to come back huge. And if not, then you know I don't really have too much risk in this trade. Uh, this trade, um, we can go back and we can go back and see where and what it looked like when it um, first uh, initiated this trade. This was a uh, broken wing. Uh, call butterfly and then uh, I held until right so I was I was in this trade for 35 days and this was right uh, headed into the earnings where I decided to uh, roll up uh, the uh, long uh, thirty three hundred dollar call and after I did, I rolled 3,300 to 3,340, took out a lot of, if you know, almost all of the risk, leaving um, just about uh, $275 worth of risk in this trade. And you know, since then, uh, the stock has been really not doing a whole lot. And since I don't have a whole lot of risk in this trade, I'm just kind of keeping one eye on it, but I'm not really concerned. Um, I did. Um, I did post about uh, getting out of um, Amazon after after they had uh, announced their earnings. Some of you guys did. Some I I, I got uh, messages that some some did, and um, I have been peeling off pieces and adding things back on and peeling things off. I trade around of a lot of my positions, and um, um, I think this here um, is really low risk relative to potential return because you know we don't know what amazon is going to do but if amazon moves over one standard deviation or over one um expected move to the upside which it can i'm not saying it's going to or it won't i'm not here to predict where it's going but if it does move more than what is currently priced in to the upside you know this trade is going to be a really nice winner and if it moves one uh, expected move to the downside, I'm probably going to lose uh, all of $275 per one spread that is currently in this trade. So question, uh, what if we do get assigned anything special for those that haven't been? And I'm guessing this is um, about the um, last uh, trade I talked about in uh, Western Digital. Um, if you get assigned, right, you're short, you have a short call that you get assigned on. If you do get assigned and now you're short stock, you can just um, buy back the stock and sell your long option and you... Um, get to keep uh, the premium that is in your long option. And the premium, I'm talking about um, any um, extrinsic or time value. But your call is deep in the money. So there's really not a whole lot of risk. You know, and, and I, don't, I don't think that uh, um, being assigned early is as great of a risk as people tend to make it out to be. Um, I don't, I don't also, I don't know um, if there's a way to predict or put odds on getting assigned. Assignment is a very random process. Uh, so I, I, you know, if you get assigned, if you get assigned on your short option, just close your long option or exercise your long option. And, you know, your short option is covered. So you don't have to worry about it. If you are concerned, if you're not sure what to do, just close out the trade altogether and don't wait until you get an assignment notice. Um, no, you don't have to exercise. You can just cover the short and sell your option, or you can instruct your broker to exercise. And um, when you exercise your long option, you will get stock, right? You will take stock away from somebody else, and the stock that you're taking away from somebody else will go towards offsetting stock that you're short. So it'll balance itself out. 
All right, <clears throat> let's move on. Uh, we are going to move on to a position that has not worked really well. Been in the trade for 38 days. Stock did not move uh, in the uh, direction that I thought it was going to move. Again, this is, um, and this is a good example of um, trade only what you're willing to lose, right? So if I set up a trade where I'm risking $85, right, to make $295, I put this trade on 38 days ago. Stock did not go the way I thought it was going to go. I'm going to take a full loss, but you know what? My losses are only limited to the amount of money that I put on this trade. All right, so did I need to stop out of this trade? And I've been in this trade for 38 days. Did I need to stop out of this trade at any given time? No. Because I plan on, but if I buy an option or I buy a spread and the spread is going to cost me $500, I'm going to assume that I'm going to put a $500 bet on if this trade if the trade falls apart if this thing doesn't work out i'm going to be out 500 bucks and if i'm willing to risk you know um two thousand dollars total then i'm going to do four of those if i'm only risking to if i'm only willing to risk 500 dollars, then i'm only going to do one right so i size my trade based on the amount of risk that's uh, tied up in this trade so here is a good example of why trading smaller and allowing um, trades to work. I mean, we can look at a chart. I initiated this trade here. It went down, popped back up. I was able to reduce cost in this um, trade. Um, let's see. So this was the original trade was to buy a slightly in the money call with 46 days to go. And then we can see that the stock wasn't really doing a whole lot. We got a pop back to where we were. And I said, okay, you know what? I think I'm going to just sell an upside call reduce cost base right my cost base went from 296 down to um 84 and i was willing to just hold it until um it's either going to work or it won't so if it doesn't work which is what we're going to see here right it's clearly not working and that's fine so i'm out um, 80, uh, $84 per one spread. I don't expect um, this to come back to life and I'm okay with it because it was part of my plan. Another trade that didn't work was Lulu. Well, this one still has 36 days to go, so I'm not really sure if it's going to work. If it's not, it's just been in a massive sideways consolidation right now it looks like it's kind of drifting lower who knows right i'm not concerned and the reason why is because i didn't you know put on 50 or 60 or 70 percent of my account on this one trade right if i'm gonna put five percent of my account in any single position assuming full risk Meaning that if this if the market was to close yes uh, tomorrow and never to open again, right? What am I going to lose? I'm going to lose ten percent of my account or five percent of my account, whatever it is that I allocate to this trade. So here's a good example. Um, put on a trade. It's not really working. We've been in this trade for thirty seven days. Stock has moved about a half of one standard deviation. So not too terrible, but it definitely did not go in the direction where I needed to go. I'm down about 40 or 45% of premium that I paid for it. I still have 36, um, 
36 days to go. Do I need, so if I was willing to risk $1,500 for this trade, do I need to do anything here down $635? No. The answer is no, right? I can hold on to it. I can, you know, over the next 36 days, there's a lot that could potentially happen, right? We can look at what will this trade look like at T plus, uh, T plus 28. So over the next 28 days, if we get a one expected move higher, right, this trade will go from being down 40% or 45% to being up 40%. We get a one expected move lower. I'm still going to be within my max allowable loss and I'm okay with it. Does that make sense? All right, let's um, move forward. So this is uh, Lulu, we have pins. I'm not gonna go into as much detail. I think you guys get the idea, but um, all right, so this is pins. Massive outperformer in this trade for 35 days, stock moves over one uh, standard deviation. So it's moved more than what was being priced in awesome uh, there were so many ways to play this um i had a um i had a uh, long call spread that i turned into a um call condor by selling a call spread against it again uh, my downside here is limited i have eight days to go i'm going to kind of hang on to it for a couple of days um it is currently showing about a 30 percent return on risk and you know if um if it continues higher I'm, I'm not going to um hold on to it much longer uh if we get some kind of a pullback towards 80 level i'm not saying it will or it won't go there but if we do get a pullback to 80 that is going to pay off really nice so i'm just going to hold on to it i have eight days left i'm going to hold on to it uh, we'll see what it does tomorrow uh, worst case by monday or tuesday of next week I'm going to need to um, close out this trade and move on, but it should be a winning trade nonetheless. Um, McDonald's. I mentioned this yesterday. Uh, we had this trade on for 34 days. You notice the pattern here? No trades are two days, three days, one day. You know, these trades are all, you know, a month old. So these trades were taking about a month ago, maybe a little bit more. So McDonald's was also um, a, <clears throat> I believe uh, McDonald's started off as just a, a vertical that um, didn't really work. And then I had turned it into a butterfly. Um, and this is a slightly skewed butterfly, uh, but in any case, I was able to, so, and in 34 days that I was in this trade, stock did not go up, right? And we can see that uh, we moved, you know, just sideways. We are right now right where this trade has started. Yet I am showing about a 20% return on risk because I was able to sell upside calls against my long vertical spreads um, to not only reduce my cost, but also um, take advantage of some of the premium decay in um, um, out of the money call spreads. This trade has eight days to go and I'm going to be uh, looking to close out this trade, if not tomorrow, early next week. That's McDonald's. We have next up PayPal. Another one. PayPal is at a max loss, uh, sorry, max uh, profit on the upside, right? I have a no uh, risk to the upside I have a very limited uh, downside risk I have eight days to go 
Um, all of the options are in the money. This cannot be left alone. This needs to be managed, which means that I have a, uh, a vertical spread at um, 250, 257 and a half. That's in the money. That needs to be closed. I can leave 250, 240 um, uh, call spread to expire in the money. It gets settled. Um, if I get a signed stock, I will also have the broker exercise the long option. Uh, net net, uh, this uh, 240, 250 will be a max winner uh, for its max potential value of uh, $10. But in any case, I don't really need to do anything right now unless I get exercised on any part of this trade, and then I'll just. Um, um, I will um, sell off and buy back the remaining parts of this trade to completely close out this trade. It's, it, you know, the, the uh, PL is kind of wacky. It's jumping all over the place <clears throat> based on the um, on uh, mid price of uh, all of these options. But again, I like to set up trades in a way where I can reduce my risk and leave upside potential. Um, those are the best case scenarios. Monies that I took out of this trade were used um, to finance other um, trades. And, you know, would it be better if I never sold um, the uh, 250, 257 half? In hindsight, yes. You know, this was, uh, this was back on January 22nd. But even then, um, we can go back and see what what the trade looked like before I have uh, made this adjustment. Mm -hmm. the adjustment was made oh so the original um call spread was put on on uh, january 11th and then about 11 days later i sold uh the uh upside uh call spread to turn this into a um, um into a broken wing call butterfly um I think all in all, this is a great trade. I'm going to hold it for another um, day or so. And then next week on Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm going to look to get out of this trade. And this cannot be a losing trade unless we have a move down uh, to the tune of about 15% or more. Um, question from uh, Jose, uh, further explain settlement. You let your call spread expire in the money. Do not sell. You know, personally, I do think that um, um, holding an in the money call spread and into settlement is not a um, ideal case scenario for me, right? If, if I have a 10 wide spread, knowing that it's going to... Um, uh, the ten a, a ten wide spread is going to be worth ten dollars at expiration. I will close it for nine dollars and eighty five cents. Right, I'll give fifteen cents to the market maker or whoever's on the other side of that trade, just not to deal with the settlement. You know, the settlement fees they will probably add up more than what the commission is for the fifteen cents to close. Right, so I'll give up fifteen cents. I'll close out the trade. If I have a 10 wide, knowing that um, I paid $2 for it, it's going to be worth 10 
at expiration, I'll sell it for 985, maybe 980, just to get out of this mess and 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 just move on. Um, but if you do hold until expiration, um, you have a long option that's deeper in the money than the one that you're short. You get a sign on your short option. You automatically get a sign on your long option. The two will, you know, your long one short the other. You will um, get assigned on both. They will offset each other. You will get the difference between strikes minus any fees associated with assignment. <clears throat> Jason is asking if you start with a vertical and you don't think it's going to hit top price, is it more profitable to leave it as a vertical or take the credit and convert it into a uh, butterfly? So if I think that if I'm in a vertical spread and I think price is kind of running out of gas and I don't think the price is going to reach my short strike of a vertical spread, I will sell a call spread against my long vertical spread, turning this into a butterfly and the credit um, collecting from the sale of the call spread will go towards reducing the cost of my long vertical spread. And um, I will accept the uh, upside risk in exchange for lower risk on the downside. But then again, you have to, um, you have to, you know, I, I, for me, I have to see evidence that uh, prices running out of gas or things are starting to get a little iffy and that leads me to believe that um, upside is limited so i'm willing to sell um, upside premium um, to reduce my risk to the downside so that is uh paypal next up nvidia NVIDIA is a trade that I've been in for 31 days. Um, it has moved about um, three quarters of one standard deviation. So not too crazy, but yes, NVIDIA broke out. Um, I played for a breakout above um, the, was it? I had resistance at about, 590 and then another resistance at about 585 so when we got here right this green ball i was looking for a move right we've been just consolidating sideways the, the range was too tight and i thought there was more upside overall market felt bullish uh, overall there was enough evidence for me to believe that prices are going to um auction higher and we didn't get it right away but now we're getting it and i have uh, 36 days left in this trade i have a uh, 560 570 so it's a 10 wide that i paid 405 and it's worth 617 or 615 so it's not quite at its full max potential um i am considering um converting this into a um either probably not a butterfly but some kind of a, a call condor like i would sell so i have a 10 10 wide call debit maybe i can sell a 620 625 Right, so I will introduce upside risk and the risk of, you know, limiting my upside above 622 in exchange for reducing my risk to the downside from 405 to only down about 200. So I'll cut my risk on the downside by 50%, but I will also cut off my upside potential north of 622 from 600 down to 300. Right, it's a give and take game. You have to give some to take some. All right, moving along. Um, this is NVIDIA. Next up is BLNK. 
And this is another one of those that started off kind of slow. Um, again, 31 days in this trade, right? So been in this for a while. Uh, stock didn't do a whole lot. We had up and down movement. All right, you can see we've moved up, down, up, down, up, chopping sideways. Awesome. I sold a call spread against my long call that I was in, reduced my risk. I'm okay now. Slightly bullish. If it continues higher, awesome. If it continues um, to the downside, then I have to think um, where do I see the next potential, right? If we if if the price gets underneath these moving averages and these moving averages roll over, I will consider closing out the straight, hopefully for a profit and um, move on. But overall, decent trade, not a whole lot of risk. I was able to remove risk, and that was my goal. So that's B, L, and K. Um, next up is A, B, B, V. This is another trade. I started um, as a um, long call, and then the following day, I was able to sell another call, reduce my cost in half, leaving myself with a decent upside potential. But the stock never went in the in the uh, direction that I was looking for. And um, let's see, thirty one days in, this trade is not really going where it needs to go with eight days to go i'm just going to hold it and you know what if my 110 115 five wide expires for a zero i'm out 111 dollars per one contract i was willing to accept the risk and i haven't done anything about it and i'm okay with it I have a position in queues. This was a hedge. It was um, at a profit at one point when the market started to look a little weak. Volatility started to pick up. And that's okay. I had accepted the risk of um, $400 per one spread in exchange for insurance premium uh, that I took in case the market was going to roll over. Um, this is probably not going to make a dime or a penny. And I'm okay with it, right? This is cost of doing business. This is also going to um, offset some of the profits if the market continues lower or if the market was to trade sideways. I'm okay with it too. I have plenty of theta, uh, which is going to help me. But if the market is going to roll over and we're going to uh, trade um, down, 7% or more inside of the next week, uh, this insurance policy should kick in and I shall be okay. That's for the queues. Uh, and I have another position in, in net. Um, I saw this come up a couple of times. I think they have earnings. As I see front month volatility at 276%. This is for sure um, telling me they have earnings. I have 99 days left in this trade. I have a call spread that is in the money. I don't really want to do anything with it. If earnings suck and stock goes lower, um, so be it. Um, but I do think that, um, you know, we were looking for a breakout. Breakout is happening, right? We had a fake out or potential um, failure to break down. We're now taking out previous uh, resistance, which should act as support. I think this one goes higher. I have 99 days to be right. I'm okay with it. I'm just going to hold. I still have a position in Home Depot. Home Depot has very little to no risk. The risk here is like literally $17 per one contract. This was a long diagonal, turned into a calendar, closed out the um, diagonal, left with a calendar, front month expired. I'm long. 
uh, just one option with eight days to go at 290 strike stock is at 276 very unlikely that the stock is going to hit 290 um if it doesn't i'm only risking 17 dollars um if it does hit and you know if we move two standard deviations to the upside uh towards 300 dollars, this is going to be a really nice uh winning trade very unlikely so if it doesn't work i'm only going to lose 17 dollars. if it works it's going to make up for it I'm not going to do anything with it um, i was able to manage the trade and take out as much risk out of it as possible and potentially leave um, some upside um, potential next up is Zendesk. Zendesk was put on 20 days ago. Again, if you guys are paying attention 20 days ago, you know, a lot of these trades, um, 30 days, 35 days, some are 55 days or more. Uh, this one is 20 days uh, in this trade. So as you can see, you know, I don't hyper trade. I don't trade next week's expiration. I give myself time. And this one has been open for uh, 20 days and I have 36 days to go. So when I entered this trade, I had over 55 days until expiration. And anyways, this trade was open on the 22nd. Stock has moved barely to the upside. Implied volatility came in a little bit. Uh, this trade is showing about a 15% return. Uh, not a big deal. I mean, um, there's nothing nothing um, to do with it unless um, I see there's evidence that, you know, price is rolling over. We're just coming back to test maybe some key moving averages. I do have time to be right. So if it continues higher, great. If it starts to break underneath, um, break even, I will consider... Um, closing this trade, but this trade was set up as an in-out trade, uh, as an in-out trade where I was risking seven hundred dollars per one spread to make eight hundred dollars per one spread with about a fifty-fifty probability. Nothing has changed over the past uh, twenty days. I still think it's okay, so I'm gonna hold it. Um, like I said, if it breaks in underneath one fifty, I will need to rethink. But if we find support there, I still think this is a good trade. Next up is uh, Snap. Snap, Snap, Snap. Um, snap was um, a long call uh, that I bought on the 28th of uh, January. And then I had converted this into a diagonal, uh, headed into the earnings. Earnings were awesome. Stock has moved uh, a whole, um, just over a half of one standard deviation in the last uh, two weeks. Trade is showing about a 50% return on risk. No upside risk. Don't really need to do anything unless the stock starts to break, you know, underneath um, 60, maybe to 58. I will consider closing out this trade and walking away from it. Nothing else um, to it. Next up is uh, Tesla. Everybody's favorite, Tesla. So this is a out of the money call butterfly. Put on three days ago, not really headed where it needs to go, but there's eight days left. And inside of the next eight days, if we get a move towards 900 where I thought it was going, this one is going to pay off nice. If it doesn't, I had assumed full risk. And these butterfly trades need to be full risk trades. Only bet what you're willing to lose. If you have a butterfly that is going for um, $5, which means you're going to risk $500 per one. If you're only willing to lose $200, the $5 butterfly is not your trade. Or make the width a little smaller and... Um, and um, figure out a way to uh, fit this um, into your um, risk profile. So with um, Tesla Butterfly, it's not really working right now. If it moves, great. If it doesn't, I am okay because I planned to take on 
full risk in um, Tesla. NIO is the next one. Put on this trade three days ago. Call vertical, 36 days to go. Slightly higher. Um, it was higher earlier today. Now it's kind of uh, on the low uh, of the day. Not doing a whole lot. Going to give it a little bit more time. If it starts to break underneath um, 57, I will need to um, uh, figure out if I still want to be in this trade. But in this trade, um, risking about 400 to make 600, I like risk reward. I think this stock may trade higher. Next up is Microsoft. Microsoft, this one has 36 days to go. This is an in-out trade, risking one to make one with about 50-50 odds. Nothing has changed. I've been in the trade for about two days. Stock has not moved a whole lot. I haven't lost a lot of premium because I didn't pay a lot of premium for it. All right, so it's kind of at a break even, slightly positive, not doing anything about it. Just going to let Microsoft do what it has to do. I think it goes higher in the near term. Uh, let's see. Next one is uh, UPS. UPS was trading higher when I first opened. And this one is a, um, a little bit of a higher risk trade. We have um, a setup where I'm risking $1.25 to potentially make $3.75. So risk reward is in my favor. However, odds or probability of success, not so much. So stock hasn't really done a whole lot. It, you know, in, in the last two days, it moved, um, you know, three, ten, um, three quarters of one standard deviation. Um, there's still uh, 36 days to go. I'm going to let it work. Worst case scenario, I am assuming full risk on this trade. If it doesn't work, that's okay too. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Next is TAN. TAN. Two days in this trade. Stock has not moved higher this is a bullish bet it's kind of trading at a um, break even with 36 days to go we're just getting started so i would leave it alone and let it do what it needs to do uh let's see we got chewy Long call, two days in, uh, stocks down about a half of one standard deviation. Uh, not really working in my favor just yet. Um, 36 days to go. Just got to give it a little bit more time. Let's see what happens. Uh, I was looking for a breakout north of 115. And the stock is currently trading at uh, 108. So we got some ways to go. Not really doing anything with it just yet. If it starts to kind of chop sideways and doesn't look like it's got any momentum, maybe I'll sell a call with less time until expiration than uh, the long option, converting this into some sort of a, a diagonal and reduce my, my uh, cost base and risk in this trade. But I haven't thought about it just yet. We have a position in Roku. This is another one. Risking 450 uh, to make 550. So one to one bet with about a 50% probability. Uh, Roku hasn't done anything in the last couple of days. It's consolidating a massive move to the upside that we saw from uh, about $400 per share where Anya first called it out. I still think Roku goes higher. I have uh, eight days until expiration. This is a kind of a binary event. Either it's going to be above 480 or it won't. So if it is above, I'm going to make 550. If it's not, I'm going to lose 450. I am willing to accept full risk and I'm okay with it.
Next up is, and these are trades that were taken um, earlier today. CrowdStrike, um, risking uh, about 900 to make 1100. So close to one to one with um, odds slightly in my favor. If it works, great. If it doesn't, I have 64 days to figure that out. Too soon to tell. Just going to let it work itself out. I posted notes uh, when I enter this trade. So um, if you are interested a little bit more about it, please go back and look at the notes. And I think that is going to wrap it up. I thought I was going to finish in 20 minutes. I didn't. Uh, but I didn't cover all the positions. As you can see, you know, there's a lot of positions that are open. A lot of them have no risk to the upside. A lot of them ha are fairly neutral. So, and that's what I do, right? I take as much risk as I can out of the trade when I can. This way I get to redeploy my capital to other trade ideas. Um, I encourage everybody uh, to learn uh, the process. I know that uh, this may sound like foreign language right now. Um, especially if you have never done anything like this, you buy an option, you sell something against it, you reduce your cost, you you know, introduce upside risk, downside risk, all these other things. There's a lot of moving parts. It's um, next level stuff, but I don't know a lot of groups out there that are talking about the same or willing to teach you the same, uh, you know, in the same level. Uh, sure, you can, you know, uh, pick up a course and and watch a video but you will never get a chance to ask the video questions and the video will give you the answers here you will right so i will share you my thought process i will tell you what i'm doing when i'm doing it and if you have any questions you can put it in the chat you can uh, message me you can email me and i will try to help you the best i can so that will do it these are open positions that i have a lot of them have been open for quite some time i'm going to start to take down risk i'm going to start to unlock some of the capital doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, go aggressively all in on new positions, but I am looking for opportunities. And when they do present themselves, I will be establishing new positions with uh, more time until expiration. And I'm going to uh, share all of my adjustments and trades along the way. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, um, I'm going to see if there are any questions. I see one question. When narrowing the width of the butterfly, one would keep the short contracts the same and just the long contracts. Um, yes, I think, you know, um, the short answer is yes. I don't move the short strikes. If I'm a long um, a contract that's in the money, I will just roll it up. Uh, rolling up long contract will result in a net credit. Net credit meaning that I'm taking back some of the money that I had invested into this trade which means that I will be effectively reducing my risk or the cost of my uh, position. And I like to do that. Once you start to move longs and shorts, you might as well just close out the trade and start from scratch. Mm, doesn't make sense to overcomplicate things. Any more questions, guys? We're gonna literally you know, take maybe two more minutes and I'll let everybody go. Anyways, guys, if you do have questions, always put them in the chat. I will always answer all and every single one of your questions. Um, awesome. All right. Good deal, guys. Uh, we're going to cut here. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the chat. Thanks for taking the time. Sorry for uh, dragging this out, uh, you know, an hour long. Hopefully you got an idea about what it is that I'm doing here and how I trade and what I'm 
looking at and how I think about things. Um, hopefully mm, you learned something and maybe um, you are the same way as I am and you're going to uh, trade the same way and manage risk the same way. Um, if not, um, that's okay. Um, you can uh, let me know what you do and how you do things and we can go back and forth and debate. That's always um, healthy. I welcome challenges and uh, I'm going to hop on to look at some of the earnings trades that we did with our um, other group, Income Navigator. We put on a couple of uh, short premium trades in um, Disney and D-Dog. I haven't looked at them just yet. Uh, question about uh, ETA for Anya's uh, Butterfly Workshop. I don't have a date. So I don't want to tell you something that isn't accurate or isn't true. I will circle back with Anya to find out. Anya, if you're on, let me know. I haven't heard anything. Um, we'll pick a date and we'll try to uh, set a date uh, and we'll publish a date and we'll see how it works for the majority of the group and we'll try to find a date that works sort of for everybody so that we get the majority of people that want to attend the workshop live. Uh, we'll be able to get as many people in the class as possible. But I think it's going to be awesome. I have some stuff prepared. I know Anya has been working tirelessly on the class. He's got a lot of goodies. I'm hoping for some super secret scripts, maybe. Anya? It's going to be awesome. Pricing for the workshop, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what Anya's cooking there. I mean, if this is going to be another six-hour class, um, I don't know. Whatever whatever he thinks is fair uh, for his time. But I promise you one thing, is that whatever you're going to pay for this class, you will probably recover the cost of this class within the first, within the first or the second trade based on information not based on alerts not based on somebody telling you to go out and do something but based on um, information that you're going to um, get from the class um, send some links or info or go over how to look and interpret analyze charts mm. You know, charts is like, you know, one thing I can say for sure is that if you want to get good at something, you have to practice. You know, if you want to get good at looking at charts, there's no there's no video, there's no guideline, there's no um, course you can take. And, and, and there's plenty of out there, right? There's plenty of courses out there. Like, hey, take my course. I'll teach you how to read the charts. You're going to be the chart master. The reality is, guys, is that it takes, you know, 10,000 hours looking at charts um, before you are able to train your eye enough to recognize certain patterns, to see certain, um, uh, to see certain clues that are in the charts to make you a good uh, chart reader, right? There's no mm, class that you can take or video. Sure, there are some basics that, you know, uh, I will post in, in the chat, you know, some very basic technical analysis of, uh, you know, moving averages, support resistance, trend lines, um, those are the basics that you want to know or you want to have. But if you want to get good at looking at charts, you got to look at charts. Look at charts, look at thousands and thousands of charts, and don't look at garbage charts, right? Scan for charts that are actionable. Uh, for example, for me, I look at charts that are in the price range of $50 or more that have options that are available weekly. That's going to narrow down from like 4,000 stocks down to about like 100, right? And, and I'm good in, and that's good enough for me. I'm good with that. And then I, I will look at charts um, in, it, from those 100 charts. I will look at those charts and uh, I will look for certain patterns. I will look for certain trends. I will look for uh, moving averages, crossovers, and so on and so forth. And that trains my eye to recognize certain things. Um, 
And I encourage everybody to do the same. You have to look at charts in order to get good at reading charts. If you're not so good at reading charts, highly suggest taking Anya's boot camp. And there are indicators that will literally slap you in the face and tell you when there is a buy signal and when there's a sell signal. <clears throat> Um, oh, Jay is asking the chart that I am showing. So this is not so much a chart. It, it's more of an um, analytical tool. Uh, this is an option net explorer. Uh, I don't know if there are any tutorials. There, there is a video or two or a, a handful of videos out there on YouTube. Uh, Dan Sheridan which is a well-known name in the business. Uh, he had done a class just talking about um, the software. There's nothing you know, actionable. You're not going to be able to go and you know, buy calls or sell puts or vice versa. But um, he just um, spent like an hour you know, going through the software. Um, just go into YouTube and like look for um, Option Net Explorer, Dan shared, and, and you will see like a ton of... Um, information about that <clears throat> maybe that's going to help you um but having a tool like um option net explorer or uh, even um thinkorswim you know their analyze tab is is very similar you can achieve the same you just have to take multiple steps to get to the same um point um knowing how to use uh, uh, any software to analyze your positions Keep track of your uh, rolling PL will definitely help you view your positions from a different angle. And that's what this software does for me. I've been using this software for probably about 13, maybe 14 years. And one thing I can say for sure, um, I do have an affiliate link for Option Net Explorer. Um, I will say one thing for sure is that uh, when I started using the software, it has changed my trading, um, you know, com completely around it. Not that I was failing, but it opened up so many different potential adjustments and um, different ways to trade the same thing that I never um, thought about before. Um, yes, Ernie, you can back test with one. They have the capability of going back in time um, just like going forward in time, you can look at what your potential uh, position will look like out into the future. You can go back. They have data in five-minute increments. So you can go back and you can back test. It's not going to be like a back test, you know, like run 10,000 scenarios for the same thing automatically and then just spit out an answer. Not like that. But you can go back into like, um, you know, what would an iron condor or what would a long call spread look like if I was to place this trade in like December of uh, 2015, and then you can go in five minute increments to see how the price or how uh, that position would change your um, risk profile and your p and um, And this is based on data from uh, the actual, um, um, actual option prices. So it's not like some modeled, uh, Past data is based on actual uh, option prices, which is awesome. All right. I'm going to cut it here. It's 4.15. I'm going to let you guys go. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, um, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully, uh, this was helpful. And I will be back um, first thing tomorrow morning. Have a good rest of the day, everybody.